Back in August, Edward and I went to France to look at houses. And over the course of three weeks, we saw about 13 houses, and we even saw some of them more than once, the ones that we liked. Over the next weeks, I'm going to be sharing some of our favorites with you, including today's, which is a house that had a standalone short-term rental apartment on the first floor and is actually still on the market. Check it out and stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to share how much it cost and where it was so you can get an idea of what your money can get you in France. The house was in a small village of about 400 people set in the Corbier Mountains. The exterior of the house was fully renovated with double pane windows, it has air conditioning and a heat pump and nice period details including original tile floors and doors. The ground floor was used as a short term rental, it was a two bedroom apartment. The house has a central corridor with rooms off both sides and a central staircase. Here the kitchen has a closet that can be used as a pantry but actually next to it behind this wall is a shoe closet and you could tear down that wall to make the kitchen larger. It was a little bit dated but had everything you needed, especially for a short-term rental. And then across the hallway was the living room which had really tall ceilings and you can see that the house gets a lot of light out of the large windows. The living room also had an original marble fireplace and an original ceiling medallion. The whole first floor also had original tiles that are very common in this region. Going down the hallway towards the back of the house, on the right here you have the central staircase and on the left is the bathroom with a large soaking tub and a standalone shower. At the back of the hallway you have a toilet room and then it's flanked on either side by large bedrooms, both very bright both with fireplaces. Because we're interested in a property that we can use as both an income property and for ourselves, we asked about how much money this property brought in from short-term rentals, and it was approximately 70 to 100 euro per night. But because it is in a bit more of a remote village, it doesn't rent out as much as we would have liked. Going up to the first and second floor, here is the central staircase. It's very French in that it's spiral and cantilevered, and you can see it has the iron railings and the original tiles. The second floor has the same layout as the first floor with a central hallway that has rooms going off of either side. At the front of the house you have two bedrooms that could actually use some new flooring but they have the original marble fireplaces and this one had a three piece ensuite which is rare to have an ensuite that also has a toilet. Now both of these rooms had the shutters closed as I was visiting, but you can tell that when they were open they'd be quite bright, just like the downstairs. Moving towards the back of the house on the second floor here, on the right you have the kitchen for the upstairs unit. It's a very spacious kitchen with original tiles, and even though it's a little bit more dated, it does have new appliances and you can see has room for a table so you can eat in. Then across the hall you have the primary bedroom, which is again very spacious, has an original marble fireplace, and then a three-piece ensuite. And looking out this window you see onto an empty lot that actually belongs to the village and will be turned into a parking lot. Going up to the top floor we again use the spiral staircase which actually has access all the way down into the ground floor garage and that would be your access as the owner so that you could keep the front door access for the short term rental. Up here we had really high vaulted ceilings with original wood beams and the original stone that's been painted over. Here they've taken part of the roof off to create a trapezian terrace. You can see the original stone walls of the house and again looking back out onto the Corbiere. 
It was a really spacious terrace. You could have a table as well as a nice seating area out here. And going back into the main living space, you can see the original terracotta floors. Off to the side here next to the terrace was a spare room that they were actually using as laundry, but that could be turned into its own kitchen if you wanted to create an individual suite up here or a bedroom or an office. And here is the main living area. It has some excellent character with the exposed beams and also a little mezzanine that you could use for a variety of purposes. The house in total was just under 300 square meters, so it was incredibly spacious. And here's a view of the back where you can see the garage and also the two right windows at the top belong to the terrace. Now going down the spiral staircase into the basement where you would enter as a second entrance, you can see that this basement is a garage and it is at street level at the back of the house. You have plenty of space for multiple vehicles as well as a workshop or maybe an at-home gym and then additional storage space as well. And here you go, you can see this is how you would enter if you wanted to keep separate entrances from the first floor rental. Finally, this property also came with a detached piece of land which was about a three minute drive from the house still within the village. This space would come at an additional cost, but you can see here the neighbors use it to garden and have some grapevines. So if you have a green thumb, this space has some great potential. So that was the house in Vilsac de Corbière in Aude in the south of France that we went to see. It was about a 30 minute drive from Narbonne and about a 30 minute drive from the Mediterranean Sea. The location and the house were both beautiful, but in the end we decided it was a little bit too remote to be the tourist draw that we are hoping it would be when we're not using the house. It was priced at 275,000 euro when we went to go see it back in August, but has since had the price dropped to 265,000 euro. And we actually know from our friends who live in the area that it's not uncommon to bid 5 to 15% less than the asking price, especially given the current real estate market in France. So you can do the math on that, but keep in mind that there's also an additional approximately 8% you'll have to pay on top of the selling price in closing costs. I've linked the listing in the description box down below if you're interested, and down there you can also find links to the other houses in the South of France house tour series. I have a very special video coming next weekend, and stay tuned for another South of France house tour in two weeks. Until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.